Okay, so today we're going to be, uh, um, you need to make notes on salts. And this is on pages 24 to 25 in your textbook. And for Monday's lesson, you need to make notes on salts. Now, um, the uh, you haven't got your textbook yet, so this page has also been put, has been scanned, and the PDF is on Sarah's um, uh, Moodle page. Okay, so the first thing you need to know about salts is you need to know the definition. And this comes up in nearly every exam paper, every atoms, bonds, and groups exam paper. A salt is formed. This is a definition, the definition. A salt is formed when a H plus ion, when a H plus ion from an acid, everybody always forgets that part, so don't forget that part. A salt is formed when a H plus ion from an acid is replaced, is replaced by a metal ion or another positive ion. For example, a common example is the ammonium ion. The ammonium ion. And that is the definition of a salt. A salt is formed when a H plus ion from an acid, from an acid, is replaced by a metal ion or another positive ion. Okay, so let's take an example. So if we take, for example, hydrochloric acid, okay, and the state symbol is aqueous, hydrochloric acid, and we react hydrochloric acid with something like sodium hydroxide, which is an alkali because it is soluble in water. Okay, so the definition says a salt is formed, okay, is made when the H plus ion from an acid is replaced with a sodium ion. So remember an acid, remember an acid is a H plus ion and it'll be the chloride ion. So when the H plus ion from the acid is replaced with a sodium ion, so that's going to make, instead it's going to make sodium chloride because the H plus is going to be replaced with sodium, so it'll be sodium chloride and that is the salt and that is aqueous and that's the salt, sodium chloride, plus to balance the equation we need something else because it's not balanced at the moment. What do we need? What else is needed? What's left over? Got the H, got no H, put them together and we have got water. And that's a balanced chemical equation, liquid water. So we don't need these as part of the balanced chemical, that was just to help us with the working out. And that's a balanced chemical equation to form a salt. Okay, so the H plus ion of an acid has been, been replaced with a metal ion. Now there's quite a few salts, right? The most common salts, so we've just done one of them now. So if we have an acid, if we have hydrochloric acid, and the salt that is made is always called a chloride. Sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, calcium chloride. But what if the acid was this acid here? Do you remember the name of this acid? Sulfuric acid, sulfuric acid, will make um, uh, the salt sulfate. Calcium sulfate, magnesium sulfate has been made from sulfuric acid. And what about this acid here? If we take this one, these are the common, the most common acids. This is called nitric acid. And this will make the salt nitrate. Nitrate. And these are the three most common acids, and therefore these are the three mo mo most common salts. But what about an acid which is a little bit rarer acid? This is called a phosphoric acid. Phosphoric acid, let me just write the name by the side. Phos 
phosphoric acid, phosphoric acid, then this will make the salt phosphoric acid will make the salt phosphate. Okay, phosphate. Right, so these are the salts. I need to talk a little bit more about this. So let's take this salt, let's take sulfuric acid first. Okay, sulfuric acid. Sulfuric acid is an acid, okay, but it's also got another, a little bit more to its name. It's called a diprotic acid. Why do you think it's called a diprotic acid? Because it's got two protons. So because it's got two H plus ions, they can be replaced one by one. So what, what if we just replace one of the H plus ions with a metal ion? So, so for example, like a sodium ion. Then you'll get something like this. This is called sodium hydrogen sulfate. Sodium, then hydrogen sulfate is all one word. Hydrogen sulfate. Okay, sodium hydrogen sulfate. That is called an acid salt. And it's called it's called an acid salt because it still has a H plus ion, but it's also a salt. So what about if we replace the next hydrogen ion? Place the next hydrogen ion, uh, and then it's, all the hydrogen ions are gone, and that is called sodium sulfate, and that is just a salt, because there are no um, hydrogen ions. So that's just a special example, it's called a diprotic acid. What about phosphoric acid? What would you call phosphoric acid? What type of acid is phosphoric acid? It's a triprotic acid because it has got three H plus ions. It's a triprotic acid. Okay, now, so in order to make a salt, there's several ways how to make a salt. How do you make a salt? Now, you're going to be doing an experiment on how to make a salt. Um, and the three ways to make a salt is that you can either have a um, acid, an acid, and a carbonate. I'll make a salt and a carbonate. For example, uh, calcium carbonate. That would make a salt. You could have an acid and a metal. That will make a salt. You can have an acid and an alkali. That will make a salt. And the final way is an acid and a base. And you're going to be practic practicing this in your lesson. You're going to have a go at this experiment next week in your lesson. Okay? And those are the uh, uh, four ways to make a salt. Now there's also a special, a little, something a little bit different with ammonia. Let's just talk about ammonia for a moment because ammonia is just a little bit different. Okay? So ammonia. So the formula for ammonia is, is what? NH3, okay? Ammonia is an alkali. An alkali is soluble in water, is a soluble base, okay? Now when that reacts with an acid, it makes a salt. And it's just a little bit different, okay, a little bit different. It's uh, HCl, which is, remember, remember, is H plus Cl minus, remember. So uh, the uh, H plus joins with the NH3 to form NH4, NH4 plus is what it forms. That's called the ammonium ion, ammonium ion ammonium ion. But remember that you've also got Cl minus, so together that is ammonium chloride. And that is a salt, it's called ammonium ammonium chloride. Ammonium chloride. Is it balanced? Is that equation balanced? Good, okay. Yeah. Yeah, it's balanced, okay. Um, and that is a salt. 
ammonium chloride and it's an acid and a base makes a salt and why do we need uh, ammonium salts they're, they're very useful for um, industrially very important ammonium salts what are they used for they're used for fertilizers they're used for fertilizers okay uh, right so you've also got to be able to work out the percentage of nitrogen in a fertilizer so in an ammonium salt so for example if we have this ammonium salt ammonium that remember that is ammonia and this is the chemical ammonia and this is ammonium if we have this one here which will be called ammonium nitrate what's the percentage of nitrogen in this compound because if you um, if you're putting a fertilizer you're a farmer and you're putting the fertilizer on the land and because you need the nitrogen for the plants the plants need the nitrogen uh, to help them grow you need to know how much nitrogen there is uh, to get the best value uh, fertilizer so what's the percentage of nitrogen okay and this is how it's worked out we call it percentage of nitrogen by mass is the term we use the percentage of nitrogen by mass so the way we work out the percentage of nitrogen okay is that we take the relative atomic mass of nitrogen and the relative atomic mass of nitrogen is 14 the relative atomic mass just from the periodic table there are two nitrogens so we go well there's two nitrogens remember this is the relative atomic mass of nitrogen okay over the total relative molecular mass okay over the total relative molecular mass total molar mass so you add up you add up 14 for nitrogen there are four hydrogens when hydrogen is one there's another 14 and there's three oxygens oxygen is 16 this is working out the the relative molecular mass and that totals when you work all that out it totals 80 so what you basically and then it's percent so you've got it times by 100 so what you basically got is you've got 28 over 80 times 100 and that gives you when you do that on your calculator you want to have a go what's it give you on your calculator gives you 35 percent so we know that this fertilizer has got 35 percent of nitrogen in this fertilizer percentage by mass so are there other fertilizers that are better for example ammonium ammonium sulfate does that have more nitrogen by mass is that a better fertilizer to use um, and this is the sort of calculations you need to do okay right so the last type of salt we need to mention it's a special kind of salt okay we'll do more about this in the lesson um, they're called hydrated salts and anhydrous salts okay so an anhydrous salt means that there's no water present an anhydrous salt there's no water present so for example copper sulfate solid copper sulfate is a white solid and anhydrous means there's no water present. Okay, now there's another kind of salt called a hydrated salt. And an example of a hydrated salt is copper sulfate again. But this time, copper sulfate, we're going to put a dot, like a full stop, and we're going to put five waters. And it's still solid it's it's not in um it's not in solution it's still solid and this is a blue solid and this is called a hydrated salt and it's called a hydrated salt because there is water trapped inside the crystals water trapped inside the crystals so there's water trapped inside the copper sulfate 
okay and this has got another name a lot of things in chemistry have got several names this is called water of crystallization and we'll be doing lots of experiments in a couple of weeks we'll be doing experiments on them um, and determining how much water is trapped in the crystals but we've got to remember it's not a solid okay it's uh, sorry it's not a, sorry it's not um, a solution it's a solid and it's, it changes color because there's water trapped in there it changes color and there's water trapped inside the crystals okay so it's still a solid um, have a look up on the um, uh, have a look up on the internet have a look at what copper sulfate 5 water what it actually looks like okay and what this dot here means means that for every one for every one copper sulfate there are five water molecules um, trapped inside the copper sulfate okay so that's salts finished you need to make notes on this you need to bring it to Monday's lesson and then on Monday's lesson we're going to practice lots of questions and exam questions on salts.